Boy, it has been a month, hasn't it? I had a horrible lung allergic reaction, which had very similar symptoms to the uh, death plague that has been sweeping the nation, so that was scary. Anyway, the world may be on fire, but it does keep turning, and as such, I will too. Here are some thoughts that I had while playing Doom Eternal. Forza Motorsport is a game where you drive a car very fast in order to win a race against other cars also going very fast, all while keeping an eye on your speed, traction, gear, turning radius, and momentum. Fail to initiate the brake early enough and you'll go flying off the track. Forget to switch gears out of the turn and the opposition will overtake you. Racing in simulation games like Forza is a delicate dance between aggression, skill, and personal awareness. Doom Eternal is the racing sim of shooters. Doom Eternal is a relentless meat train shot out of a giant cannon thundering down tracks composed of unused Darksiders concept art and the burning embers of a heavy metal album thrown into the fires of Asgard. When I first booted up this sequel to Doom 2016, I went in expecting of all things more Doom 2016. It's hard to imagine now, but I remember being disappointed throughout the opening hours when I realized that id had all but completely thrown out the pitch-perfect tone of the 2016 game that felt like a cheeky upturning of modern shooter conventions while keeping relatively grounded in both environment and enemy design. The backstory was grand sci fantasy, while the world and plot were simple to understand and firmly planted in the realm of science fiction. It was a tight balancing act that the team at id had walked perfectly, so I was a bit shook when Eternal basically says screw balance and starts on a wooden boat full of meat cubes being carried on the back of a giant minotaur. Why not? If compared to its predecessor, it loses a bit of its spark or novelty, but when taken to something new, something totally different, it shines with a deep challenge and more bat crap crazy lore than you can shake a chainsaw at. The way I think about it, if Doom 2016 is Evil Dead 2, then Doom Eternal is Army of Darkness. Bigger, crazier, goofier, if not overall better than its predecessor. It's different, and that's great. It's a bombastic shooter that has its fingers in a lot of pies all at once, throwing horde after horde of enemies at you while giving little ammo and health to work with. One thousand systems that vary from ice grenades that slow enemies, a flamethrower that makes enemies drop armor, or the ever-violent chainsaw that was seemingly cursed by a witch to poop bullets every time you cut through a big spooky meat monster. This is where the racing sim element comes in. At first, I thought the game was way too complex. All those systems are needed to survive. Without armor, you're a glass cannon. And without ammo, you can't adapt to a new situation. And without health, you're dead, because that's how health works, it's a video game still. At first, I would keep dying in an encounter because I was trying to play it like the last game, or any reasonable game, mostly relying on shooting demons until they lose all their gumption and tearing them in half like medicine pinatas. In this game, that's not enough. I would forget to burn demons for armor or get overwhelmed because the ice grenade slipped my mind. The game comes at you fast, and it can be overwhelming. It is overwhelming. When I first started to play Forza with a manual transmission, I'd stress over which gear to use and when. I'd wildly switch from 2 all the way up to 6 without thinking. There was so much information coming at me at once that I froze and spun out time after time. Then I realized why. I wasn't used to being in control of the car. I had let the game automate so much for the sake of fun and enjoyment. I wasn't used to having so many tools to solve a simple problem. Then, I shifted my thinking. Instead of trying to guess which gear I should be in to make a turn, I started thinking which gear would help me make a turn the easiest or maintain my speed while crossing any terrain. 
If I internalized each gear and how they made the car react, I could look at a corner up ahead and plan my shifting to optimize my route. I'm not very good at it, but I started winning some races, and more importantly, I started having fun. Each tool in Doomguy's arsenal is a way to keep moving through the track, only instead of asphalt, it's demon meat! Once that thought crystallized, I was all in. I found myself using jump pads, ledges, and power-ups that I had largely ignored back in 2016. Here, they were necessary lifesavers to use at just the right moment to pull off my quickly thrown together attack plans. Greater challenges became more rewarding. Keeping an eye on my cooldowns while noticing what new enemy types spawn on the field became a transcendent and transfixing experience. And as the game layered on complexity and new obstacles, I found it surprising just how playable it was. Smooth, meditative. If for a single moment I stopped focusing, I felt like an ant against a herd of buffalo. But the moment I dialed in, I became death itself. I did not use a single grenade in the entirety of Doom 2016. When I saw the guys with the shields, I would be like, oh yeah, I have grenades. And then I would use one and then it would miss. In Eternal, I have to use everything every single attachment, I'm using every single tool. I upgraded my grenades to have two and I use them all the time. It's a feeling that other games don't really give me, wading through an ocean of hyper-violence and absurd fantasy motifs. Then the Marauder shows up and is a sloppy party crasher that looks very cool, the Marauder is a stupid bastard who comes in to break the flow of the game and force you to pay attention to him and only him and his ghost dog. Because of course he has a ghost dog. Who doesn't like ghost dogs? <sighs> The issue is the Marauder just doesn't make sense in the context of the mile minute shooter that is Doom. If you shoot him from too far away, he pulls up a dumb shield that eats 100% of damage, even the BFG, even the one hit kill sword that you specifically get after you meet him, like here's a sword that'll kill him, just kidding it won't. If you get too close, then he shoots you with a double barrel shotgun. He is annoying and acts as a punishing distraction from all the cool stuff I was talking about near moments ago. Eventually, you can find ways of dealing with his ilk that aren't too troublesome, like the double barrel shotgun on console or the ballista on PC. Try the ballista on console. It does not work, I tried it. Maybe I'm bad, maybe my thumbs are bad. I don't know why I'm angry now. You know why I'm angry? Cause of this guy. Anyway, I'm not actually that mad anymore. It's been like a uh, few weeks since I beat the game and I, it's fine now. Eventually, I already wrote that. Eventually you can find ways of dealing with the elk that aren't too troublesome, but unlike the Doom but unlike the Doom Hunter's plasma shields or the Arachnotron's aversion to sniper rifles, this tall drink of cold piss is a little too defensive. It's like if in Project Cars, halfway through the season, a wild rhino is let loose onto the track, and you just have to deal with that. If there's a rhino on the track, that's not good racing. Cars and rhinos don't mix, everyone knows this. The game also falters a bit in its lore and story. They're fine, it's fine, but is in a way that kind of was too heavy and left me wondering, who are you? Why is this? Why is that happening? Where are we? What's going on here? What does that mean? It's not funny enough to be as weird as it is. It's like a Darksiders game, cool looking and I like it, but it's dense for the sake of being dense. Like a Sofia Coppola film. Lost in burnlation. Oh man, I hate overly dense world building that isn't supported in the text. I know, right 297? The insectoid drone rebel from a future faction who seeks to control time in a previous episode of this show that no one watches or cares about? However, Doom is a shooter, and most of what you do is shoot things, so it would all be for naught if Eternal didn't control like a cybernetically enhanced buttered pig navigating a winding canyon in a million dollar fighter jet. Which is to say it's great. And much like Forza, looking at the pretty character models and environments while moving at light speed is half the fun. And Eternal has its share of environments. I wrote that wrong. Environments? Environments, I'm the count now. Uh... From military bases to medieval strongholds to ancient Martian cities, this game looks outstanding. I am shocked that a game this pretty can run so well on a PS4. My goodness. In summation, this punch factory is gorgeous, 
fun and mechanically complex. It's like a racing game. I didn't put any time into multiplayer, but if I had, I'd probably think it was fun. This was uh, written a while ago before I got the lung infection. Uh, I did put time into multiplayer. I don't like it at all. Here we go.